Next, business tips from Shark Tank's Robert Herjavec. You've got to believe in yourself. There are going to be really crappy days. If you can get up on those days, you can make it. You're stronger than you think. Welcome back. You know, we all know Shark Tank. It's the show where entrepreneurs pitch millionaires their big idea to see who will invest and take their business to the next level. It can be pretty intense in that Shark Tank. Well, my next guest is not only a shark, he's a mogul with a heart. Please welcome Robert Hershebeck. <laughs> What a great there. show, all women. Well, mainly women. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ladies first. Yeah. <laughs> I brought a gift here? for you. You were kind enough to come on our show and bring cookies, so I brought you some gifts from Canada. I brought you a moose. Aww. And I brought you a Canadian scarf, and... Tis the season for a Canadian scarf. Because it's cold out here. And, and we're maple syrup. In yeah. You look hot. <laughs> Because you're a big skier. I am. I'm, a, yeah. I'm an amazing, you know, yeah. black diamond skier. <laughs> I wish. I wish. In my dreams. Thank you so much. That's you're so welcome. nice, you know? Um, oh, well, we're well, neighbors. I guess I could put this on my, my pancakes. <laughs> Just looking for something edible in there, Robert. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Robert, it's so good to have you here. I love your energy, your vibe on the show. You are a businessman, but, but you do have a heart. Um, is, is it because you kind of have this sort of rags to riches story. Do you think it's because you, you kind of started from the bottom and worked your way up? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you start at the bottom, you never forget that. And, you know, people come out in front of us and I always remember my mom's voice always saying to me, you're no better than anybody else and nobody is better than you. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, no matter, no matter how hard I try, I, I can't be rude to people because oh. I always put myself in their shoes. And I think the defining moment for me was, I mean, I, I came to North America on a boat with a suitcase, the whole story, but when I was 12 years old, this door-to-door -door salesman sold my mom a vacuum cleaner. And it was more money than six months' rent. And I oh. come home, you and my mom that. barely spoke English, and my dad's there, and he's crying, mm -hmm. and my mom's crying, and it was so devastating. What I learned in that moment was, in this country, you got to make a certain amount of money to take care of your family. And what I said is, nobody will ever take advantage of my family again. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Ah, I feel so bad. You know, it's terrible when you get hustled like that. But, but you know I, what? It taught you some things. It teaches you something. Sometimes to get ahead in life, you know, some of us are born with this motivation, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. I never had the courage to be strong. Really? Sometimes you gotta be pushed. Right. You don't know what you're capable of until you put in that situation. This is true. Right. This is true. We learn from these life lessons. And you know, one thing I, I read about you is that you really follow your intuition. How do you know in business particularly when to follow your intuition? Uh, or have you just failed miserably when you haven't done that? Well, <laughs> I failed miserably lots of times. But you know, I think everybody, you, everybody in this audience has this voice deep inside them. Mm -hmm. When my wife got engaged to me, I was running a big business. We got married, we went on our honeymoon. And the day we come back from our honeymoon, I walk into my office and the guy who owned the business fires me. Wow. And the guy said to me, if you don't stay after I fired you, I'm gonna sue you for $5 million. So I come home, I tell my wife the story. Her first reaction is she starts crying. Wow. There's a lot of crying in yeah. my life. She, she starts crying. She says, am I going to lose my car? And then I knock on the door, and the sheriff gives us a lawsuit for $5 million. So wow. I think you just, I had to make a mortgage payment. I had two weeks to make the next mortgage payment. So I went looking for a job, and I started a business. And I gave myself two weeks. And the day before the mortgage payment was due, I made the sale and I got a job. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Ooh. but 
Wow. But you know, it's your gut feel. And right. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, do I take the job? And everybody's saying, take the job, take the job. My mom's saying, take the job. Right, because you're in the midst of all of this drama Absolutely. that somebody's trying to sue it's, you. It's security. You got bills to pay. But this little voice that we all have deep inside me is saying, maybe. Now's your opportunity. Maybe you're good enough. Maybe mm -hmm. you can make something of yourself in this life. Wow. And I started a company. I'm glad you did. So are my kids. I, I know your old boss is like, come on, why? Why didn't I? So when I bought my first Ferrari, <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to put a license plate. I'm going to hang out here with the humble uh, moose. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a great story. When I bought my first Ferrari, I wanted to get the license plate to be the name of the guy that fired me. <laughs> But you know, I didn't. I didn't because my wife said, you got to let it go. Yes. Life is about forward movement. Let the past well, go. Well, let, let's, let's talk about that because you are extremely successful. Uh, you, you do have this really positive spirit. And you started a business in the midst of turmoil. It's something we talk about a lot, uh, particularly to moms or mothers or women watching our show. One of the things we are constantly talking about is reinvention. And mm -hmm. you sort of reinvented in the midst of struggle. So if you could give advice to our ladies out here, you know, just maybe three ways that they could, you know, follow their intuition or create things that they'd like to do. Well, I, I think the first thing I always say to everybody is you are stronger than you think, mm -hmm. right? you have the courage within you to do it. And you've got to believe in yourself because there are going to be really, really crappy days. Right. And if you can absorb failure, if you can get up on those days when failure makes you feel overwhelmingly like you can't even get up, if you can get up on those days, you can make it. You're stronger mm. than you think. Wow, what else? Uh, I think the... Uh, the second one is fix a problem. Fix a problem, don't start a business. Too many mm. people are fixated about the semantics of a business, but if you find a problem that people are willing to pay for, you're gonna make it. And then I think the third Sounds one- so simple. <laughs> it is so simple, but most great businesses are in areas that you don't, you know, you don't really know about. And then when also when you see these huge businesses that someone just had common sense about a simple thing and said, that needs, that needs fixing. Right. Or and you don't have be, to be the first. Sense. You don't have to be the first. Thing. You know, McDonald's didn't invent the hamburger. Right. They just, they just did it. They just executed better. Right. And I think the final one is, you got to go, baby. You, you got to go. Because when it's time to go, you got to go. That's what I'm talking about. Business is a sprint until you find an opportunity, then it's a marathon. Hmm. Makes sense? All right. All makes sense to me. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to meet one of Robert's success stories from Shark Tank. How about that? We'll be right back. Business tycoons I know. Robert Hershevik is here. He's one of the sharks from Shark Tank. Now, have you ever watched a great pitch on Shark Tank and wondered what happens next? Well, we are about to meet one of Robert's recent investments, the Hamburgs, a Southern California family that turned their hobby into a business. Take a look. I'm Pete Hamburg. This is my oldest son, Gus. I live with my wife and five sons in sunny Huntington Beach, California. And we are the inventors of Hamburgs. We are the epitome of a Southern California beach family. Me and all my brothers are all lifeguards. My dad's a firefighter, and we all surf. I've lived and surfed in Huntington Beach for over 35 years. I realize that that great surfing feeling that I've been able to enjoy is something that everyone wants to connect with. That's why we created our product. We have a product that will allow people all over the country to truly experience the feeling of surfing without water. That 
is so cool. Robert, I don't even know if I need to ask you what won you over, but what, what did? <laughs> what I mean, look at them. Look how authentic <laughs> they are. They are selling a lifestyle. See, most people, the other sharks thought they were selling boards. They're selling a lifestyle. Right. They are. I mean, this really feels like surfing USA, California. So what happened after the show? It was amazing. We just got crushed by a tidal wave of orders. It was, it, um, it just kept growing and growing and growing. We did a year's worth of business in 30 days. Yeah. Wow. So I guess you know what you're talking about, Robert. How involved are you in the business? I'm pretty involved. I like to, uh, I like to surf and I like to get fit. And you know, they're really nice guys. You can never underestimate the power of being nice in business. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Gus, this was just like a hobby to you, and now it's a business. How did you turn this hobby into a business? <laughs> I, I like this thing. I think this, <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, it's true. Well, we started handboarding as just a way to mimic surfing on land, and we weren't really getting anywhere until my mom ran over one of the skateboards in her car <laughs> and modified the turning mechanism so that, yeah, there's my mom right there. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> So basically, it was a happy accident yeah. that became perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. OK, so you want to show me how you do this? Yeah, we've got I, a board over here yeah, for you to try out. Right. Can you do this in a, in a mean heel? <laughs> if, anybody, <laughs> if anybody can, you can. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I think I might, have to kick, I might have to kick these off. So you're I'll, barefoot. I'll yeah, try to be that, like that's you. That's right. That's the hand board way. Woo! Oh, wow. Wow. OK. Woo! Oh, so what yeah. do you do? You just kind of... You bend your knees and think... You bend think, your knees. And think surfy thoughts. And then hit the bricks. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, why don't you really do the real deal, though? Because I'm kind of just, you know, looking good on it. But you can make it look good doing it. OK. So why don't you ride us out to break? Thank All you right. so much, Thank Peter. You. For sure. Thank you, Robert, so Thank much. You. I so wish you guys you. all the best success. The vibe is totally right. I'm going to come take some surfing lessons. And don't forget to check out Robert on Shark Tank on Friday nights at 9. <laughs> <laughs>